Okay, so I wanted to update you on the InSight mission to Mars. Um, we've been, for those of you that have, are regulars, you're going to be very bored because you've been hearing about this for, for months now, but this is the most recent uh, NASA mission to Mars. It landed right around, uh, it's almost a year ago now. It was uh, right after Thanksgiving last year. And uh, the purpose of this mission is to probe the interior of Mars. And so it's got two primary instruments. One is a uh, very precise seismometer looking for Mars quakes. And the other is an instrument that takes the temperature of the subsurface. And that gives you an idea of how much heat is flowing out of the interior. So between the two of those, you can determine a lot about the interior structure, whether there's a liquid core, whether there's a, a plastic mantle that uh, is able to sort of move around like toothpaste uh, inside the planet. Um, and so that landed successfully. And uh, the, uh, around February of last year, they deployed both of these instruments. They, the road to the planet on top of uh, the lander, and then they use this robot arm to lift them and, and put them out on the surface away from the lander. And so the uh, seismometer has been working beautifully. The, uh, the heat flow probe, uh, not so much. Uh, it's got a device called a mole on the end of it. It's imagine a stainless steel turkey baster um, and it's inside of it, it's got a little pile driver. And so it has a weight that it winds up and then it drops it down. And every time it drops down, it should burrow a little bit into the surface. And they started doing that. Everything seemed to be hunky-dory. But after about a day of doing these uh, cycles of the pile driver, it stopped. And uh, it didn't continue penetrating the surface. And so there were lots of indications that it had run either into a rock or a very dense area underneath. Um, and they thought that it also had, uh, had sort of tilted a little bit. And so the plan then was to lift this housing off of the, the mole so that you could really see what, uh, what was going on. And so when they did that, here's what they, they found. So there's the very top of the mole, and it looks like it had excavated a little bit of a hole here, and that's as far as it, as it had, had penetrated. Um, so after much head scratching and looking at all the data, the theory is that uh, they ran into a very low cohesion, I, I'm sorry, a very high cohesion layer. So imagine the difference if you have a, a couple of coffee cups, you fill one with, with uh, salt or sugar, fill the other with plaster of Paris or talcum powder or uh, cornstarch, something like that, stick a finger in and pull it out, the, the granular stuff, it's just going to collapse. Uh, the, the stickier stuff, the hole is going to stay there. It doesn't collapse. And what this whole process requires is that they have friction along the length of the, the mole. And so the soil needs to collapse around it, and that's what keeps it penetrating. Otherwise, it just sort of rebounds, and it's sort of going back and forth. And so that was the thought. And so what they decided to do was uh, use a little sample scoop and compress the surface. So they tamp it down as hard as they can to try and collapse the, the hole. Turns out it didn't collapse. And so then the next idea was let's try, they call it pinning this, where they move the sample scoop against the mole, so it's actually in contact, and so the scoop is what's providing the friction on it. And uh, so here they are doing that, and you can see they, they started doing the pile driving, and the mole started 
burrowing into the surface, which is exactly what they'd hoped would happen. And so they got to the point where it was uh, almost level with the surface to where it would start dragging the cable with the temperature sensors along with it. And so they decided they needed to move the scoop a little bit to the side. They were afraid that uh, in this situation, if they're pushing hard, as soon as this gets below the scoop, then the scoop would slide sideways and perhaps damage that cable. Um, so here is what happened when they did that and turned it on. Uh, it actually backed out of the of the surface. And uh, this is all automated, so uh, it's the way the commanding works is you send up the commands in the morning and it does what you tell it to do and then at the end of the day you get the data back. And so uh, I can only imagine the, the uh, heartburn in mission control when they started seeing these pictures come back one at a time and instead of this uh, mold disappearing into the surface, it's starting to come out. And it's like, oh my God, it's gonna flop out. And, uh, and it, if, if it does come out of the, the hole that it's burrowed and falls over, that's the end of the experiment. There's no mechanism where they could actually pick it up and, and put it back in the surface. And so this is uh, where it was. At, uh, when it started that process. So there's the very top of the mole. And then this is the, what it looked like after they, uh, they had their, uh, their final run of the pile drivers. And so what they've been doing for the last month now, I think this was something like October 4th. Um, so what they've been doing now is moving the arm around and taking pictures of the hole and, uh, and so they do that. I think I've got a time sequence here. So there they've lifted the, the arm up. There's the, the mole. And uh, here's another view so you can see, yes, there's, there's a hole there, but about, uh, it's backed out about half of its length. And so luckily it's still stable in the surface. It's not falling over. And so what they're doing right now is putting the arm back down, pushing as hard as they can against the surface. And then they're gonna do this pinning again where they move the arm against the, the mole and hopefully it will reburrow at least to the point where it was when, when it started backing out on the um, October 4th. Um, that's a, something they might look at if the preferred method is let's do what we've already done because we know at least we're not going to break it. But if that doesn't do anything, then the other option is you come in from the other, other direction and, and try that. Um, and there's even some talk if they can get it down to where it's almost level with the surface if they're very careful, they might be able to snag just the edge of the, the mole and sort of push down from above. And uh, that's a last ditch effort because again, if they damage that cable, it's, there's no way to fix it and that's the end of the experiment. But here's what they've been doing. You can see they've pushed on the, the surface as hard as they can. So that divot is, is a little deeper and now they've started moving the, uh, the arm against, oops, against the, uh, the mole. And over the course of the next couple of weeks, they're going to try this again. And so I'm reasonably certain by, uh, by our next meeting in Jan at the end of January, we'll, we'll certainly have an update of, and hopefully uh, an update of success.